Welcome to Stage, Screen, and In Between with Helen. I'm Helen Primus, and I have a terrific guest for you today. She has out a brand new album, Tiara. She has the first in a series of her children's books called The Adventures of Dean and Debbie. And she also has out a music video, May Was a Bang Bang. She's working on a TV series, and she's just a fantastic performer. She's a lead singer with Risky Business Band, and she's also a good friend of mine, Camille Saturday. Hi, Camille. It's so good to see you. It's great to see you too, Helen. Thanks so much for having me on. Thank you for coming on the show. You're such an amazing talent, and I want everybody to meet you and, and know what, a, what a, a great talent you are and what a good friend you've been to me too. Thanks so much. You're awesome too. Love you. I love you too. So. Let's, before we get into everything you're doing now, which is so amazing to be accomplishing this during the pandemic, let's go back to how you began. Because you're a very good singer. You sing with Thank Risky you. Business Band. You've been in theater. You've been in movies. You've written screenplays. So how did all this start for you? And where did you grow up? You, you know, it started... Uh, Really, when I was a kid, I've always enjoyed acting and singing, even in elementary school, just always liked creating. And I grew up actually, uh, I was born in New York City and I grew up in Queens, flushing like a nanny. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was great. And uh, then we moved out to Long Island about, I don't know, I was about 11 or 12. And, and I finished my schooling out, out there. And I had a great, uh, you know, great education too. When did you start singing? I started singing uh, early in high school. I started really, I always knew I could sing, but I, I dared to audition in, in school for uh, some of the leads in the school plays, which I landed the mystery we were doing in the same year I landed a musical. So I pursued it since then uh, in college and did a lot of community theater, regional theater. Uh, I love the theater. That's where my roots are. And it's a lot of work, though, the theater. <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot of work. A lot of fun, though. And, and, I, you, need I, a good, and you need a good memory, too. Absolutely. <laughs> Remember all your, all, all your lines. So uh, what, what category would you put yourself in as a singer? Do you like to be pigeonholed or do you do various styles? I, you know, I'd have to say I'm a pretty eclectic singer, I think, because I love doing standards. And, uh, but I love doing pop and rock too. And, you know, with Risky Business too, uh, or, and working in bands pretty much all my life, there is a variety of stuff that you really, sh you know, it helps being able to do. Uh, so yeah, I consider myself a bit eclectic, but I do like the pop rock area, so. Yeah, so uh, now you have this new album out called Tiara, but the, the main song on that is My Tiara, right? It's my Tiara, yes. Yes. So how did you come up with this whole uh, album? First of all, I always wanted to do uh, my own CD and an original one at that. Everything on the, on the new CD is original music written by me and Irv Berner. Irv is a longtime friend and guitar player, wonderful guitar player, very accomplished musician. And um, this has been about four years in the making between, you know, other things get in the way, whether you're running a household or, and the COVID has really put, pushed everybody back, obviously, yeah. uh, with many things we're all doing. Well, not you. <laughs> I tried to make <laughs> most of it working from home. Herb had started to send me some music just for fun. Uh, the first song that he sent me was an accident. Uh, he sent me some music on a CD and there was some music on there that didn't have any uh, lyrics or any kind of a real melody and I just came up with some thought it was fun and, and pretty good and he loved it so we started to work with uh, Bob Stander Grammy winning producer and Bob is just awesome uh, arranging the whole CD and you know we, we continued working from there we just never stopped you know? right so now the first song that my tiara that has a great dance beat right don't you think so I think so I think when we finally uh, finished arranging it, um, we, we listened to it and Bob was like, this has a good sort of a Motown feel, a little yeah. bit. And uh, I have a great sax player, 
I know you have a great like Eric, sax solo in there. Eric Lawrence had, did a great sax solo on that tune. And if you haven't heard it, really, I think uh, I think you'll love it. I really do. Well, actually, I heard it on uh, 90.1 on the radio the other day. I heard um, Tiara and I heard Marshall Jones. Marshall Jones, yeah, on uh, 90.1 FM uh, with John Tobacco. Yeah, real, uh, I was really happy uh, to hear that. It was just fun hearing it being played out. It was, it was really good. And I like the fact that he played Marshall Jones because it's, Marshall Jones is a little country, but it's really rock. It's kind of a- I, I, I put it, I, I categorize it as like cool and hip. Yeah, it's just <laughs> uh, a very kind of cool tune. It is, I think so. Yeah. And then you have floating on air, which kind of, uh, it's kind of like floating on a cloud when you listen to that, right? That was a ballad that, uh, you know, it just, it just lent itself to sort of a love song, you know? Yeah. And, and then yeah. we have May was a bang bang. That's fast and funky yeah, beat, that's right? You. That's, that's coming right at you. Yes. <laughs> that's coming right at you it and is. you also have a music video on that which i yeah. happen to be in there as may I thank you very I'm much for that a lot of fun that was a lot of fun and then uh you have uh sex in a bed with which actually if you listen to the uh lyrics there's nothing going on there 
<laughs> He's got no time. He, uh, it is a little bit of a story and it's, it's, a, it's a cool story and you could take from it what you, what you want. Everybody actually sees things differently, you know? Yeah. Well, actually, I thought it was kind of like country. It did tell a story. And I said, gee, this kind of has a, a, a country uh, flavor to it. And I really like yeah. yeah. Another really great uh, dance one was uh, the whole nine yards. nine yards. Right. I really, I, I think I'm gravitating towards yeah. that one. <laughs> it is. It's a good dance tune. It has a good beat. It kind of gets you moving. And, uh, you know, I, I like to inspire people in all different ways, whether you want to dance to it, hum along with the lyrics, sing, whatever. But as long as it touches someone in some way, it, it makes me happy. Yeah, I, I think you have something for everybody in that because you also have the, it's kind of like a ballad, Wasted. I kind of well, thought that was like a ballad. Uh, you know, Irv had come up with that because uh, he just had come from, um, you know, a, a group meeting. And it just sparked him to write about about people, you know, and what they go through in that way. So yeah, um, he so, sort of sort of saw it from an outsider looking in, and he yeah. Came up so what is your creative process like? Well, when with me and Irv, it's uh, with songwriting. Uh, we pretty much do do things together, but it, it it's. It's almost spur of the moment. I have to have things just hit me and just feel it. There's a lot of music that we have without any lyrics or specific arrangement. And I listen to a lot of them and, and Irv comes up with quite a bit. And sometimes I will just hear something and know right away that this is something I want to work on and, I, and it just flows. And yeah. uh, that's pretty much how we, we work it. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any uh, famous uh, musicians or singers that you admire? I have quite a few of them um, in the standards and, and melodic category. I mean, I always loved listening to um, like Edie Gourmet, Barbara Streisand, Dinah mm -hmm. Washington, all those singers from way back then, Billie Holiday, had a big influence on me. Ella Fitzgerald, um, love those styles love them and and then you know moving up i love carol king and i love linda ronstadt they yeah. a really big inspiration to my music and singing so uh they were wonderful and still are and uh yeah you can't just help uh listening to their music it, it was really uh, kind of spoke to me and and i loved the 70s so it was what's, a great era for music what's some of the uh, best of advice that you've you've been given uh, the best advice I've been given for this business, you mean in general, the songwriting, the, yeah. uh, the same I give to other people sometimes where uh, persistence pays off. Um, if you have something you really want to do, um, don't give up on it. Just keep doing it. Just keep at it. You know, you might not be working for a while or you might not be singing or acting or painting or whatever you do. You've been busy too during the pandemic. Haven't you been painting too? I have. I've been, I've been doing some painting work, yeah. Trying different sort of styles and things like that just to pass the time. But I've been doing a lot of things to try to pass the time being home. Uh, luckily for me, I could work on my computer and I could work from home. But you know, it's very constant when you're, when you're home, you really start, uh, you know, the boredom could set in. I mean, you could really easily just get into sitting around doing nothing. I mean, I don't know if anybody else could relate to that. Yeah. Many days where I just want to sit there, eat some ice cream and watch movies. So, well, that, that's okay to take a okay break in between. Do. It is, but you know, I, I don't want to get into a rut of doing that, you know. but Yeah, I, I don't think you're going to have a problem with that. Tell us something about your book now, The Adventures of Dean and Debbie. I did finally get that done. I have a book out right now. It's called The Adventures of Dina and, Dina and Debbie. And it's a series book for young teens. And I started this like years ago and just never really pursued it, but always knew I wanted to do it. And I finally got it done. And it's out in, in bookstores, Barnes and Noble uh, on, on the internet and uh, Amazon. And it's, it's a series book where they go through, these young girls go through different adventures. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So I have one out right now and uh, I think there'll be another one coming out. I'm almost done with that one in 2021. 
and I hopefully will keep doing keep doing that. Are Dina and Debbie are they teenagers? Yeah, they're young teens. They're like the the book really could speak to probably uh, any young teen. Uh, you know, usually girls would probably go for it. Uh, it's a little bit more about the girl's point of view, uh, probably anywhere between 10 and 15, you know, or 16. I think. Uh -huh. And that's the first book. How many, how many do you think you're going to get in the series? I couldn't even answer that. I just hope <laughs> I get loads of them. <laughs> Let's, just say that. Let's just say that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now you also have a television series possibly called Shadows. Well, Shadows is a uh, film that I'm in the midst of writing, mm -hmm. as you know. <laughs> yes. Helen is a part of it. <laughs> and uh, we've gotten uh, a few couple of scenes done. And uh, unfortunately, filming has come to a halt because of the whole virus yeah. situation, which is very sad. And I know um, all of us could relate to their lives being on hold. So, um, but I'm still continuing to write. It's called Shadows. It's pretty mysterious. And that's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to be mysterious about it. I am. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I have a couple you... of films on the fire. Another comedy coming. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to start filming that uh, in the spring or summer. We shall see. It's all, uh, it's all a day by day thing, unfortunately. I know. So you must miss uh, being with the band because you were... Uh, playing all around and a fantastic band. I do miss, I do miss, we all miss the live performing. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's been a risky business, decided not to perform live until 2021. Okay, uh, I think that's wise. Yeah, there's just, as far as I'm concerned, I just think there's uh, too much risk, uh, yeah. especially that there are a couple of people in the band that are high risk. Uh, and might be at more risk than others. So we're just going to play it safe uh, and come back 2021, hopefully. So where we could perform safely and everyone else can be, could be safe too. So, but we do yeah. miss. We so, so what were one of your highlights of being with the band? What were one of your favorite performances? Well, we love doing the outdoor concerts. Uh, we just did outdoor concerts all over the place. Valley Stream, you know, Queens. Smithtown, uh, Long Beach was actually uh, another fun, fun. I love being by the beach. We all love being by the beach. So. Oldies you, you, you have a nice following, you do. The band has a nice following, yes. Uh, I, I'm just, we're all so grateful for just seeing people, you know, packed in and having a great time. To see people again, right? Having a good time. Well, I can't wait to see that either, you know, people again. But uh, we're like, hey, you know, we're, we're here to have a good time at this point in our lives. And if you all want to come down and, you know, it's like who, who's having more fun, the band or the people that came to see the band? <laughs> I know, right? We're we're grateful for that. We're we're all just looking forward to get back, and um, we miss each other too. You know, it's just, yeah. we have a good camaraderie, and we yes, you do for many many years. I know all these guys for years, so uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, I know. You were nice enough. I actually came down to one of your know, uh, gigs yes. and I covered it and that was Good. an awful lot of fun, right? Yeah. So I have a couple of questions for you. If you were offered a reset button on your life, would you press it? And at what point would you press it? That is a really loaded question there. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know if I can answer that. Because there's a few spots in my life where, like everyone else, I think that would, you'd want to go back and, and press that button um, to do a redo. You know? But I guess the times in my life that I would, might want to redo is uh, when I was younger and first pursuing looking for work, I would have maybe done uh, that differently. I might have uh, uh, did more traveling to get more work, uh, you know, maybe out to, you know, different cities, mm -hmm. uh, get more auditioning, or I would have just pursued it maybe in a different way. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's maybe one, one thing, you know, might have done. Because now it's such a different world when it comes to entertainment and music. And I mean, not, I think anybody under, 30 might not really know what pounding the pavement really is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those days with your photo and resume running around New York City and slipping your Well, at least you could. You floor. could get into a building and, and drop it off, you know, at a, in it's an a envelope lot, a lot of outside real the agent's pavement. door or whatever. So you couldn't that. even get into a building now. Exactly. So I think all in all, maybe back then, uh, uh, in, the, in reference to maybe career-wise, yeah. Yeah, I would have done a few things differently. Uh, if you could become an animal, what animal would you choose? You didn't warn me about these questions, you know. <laughs> I never do. <laughs> uh, again, I don't. I, I don't know. Um, maybe a cute little puppy dog. <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> okay. If you had to listen to one song forever. For the rest of your life, you can only pick one song. What song would it be? Well, that, there is no one song for me, first of all. I must say, there is no one song. But maybe the first song that comes to mind is Imagine by John Lennon. Uh, it just speaks volumes about That's me. so appropriate for today's world, right? Imagine. Yeah. Imagine there's no countries. Uh, he above was, us only sky. Uh, yeah, above. I mean, yeah, he was obviously super insightful. And um, that song speaks volumes about many things. Yeah. Concern. And I miss John a lot. I have to say, yeah. him and his music. Yeah. Yeah, it's very sad. If you were to open for somebody ultra famous, who would you choose? Uh, well. That's, that's another one you're, you're rolling <laughs> all at me today. Wow. Uh, maybe Paul McCartney or Elton John. Yeah, Elton John. Ooh. Love Elton John. Yeah. Love, love, He's love. like yeah. really one of my, my favorite favorites. And we missed the concert. Uh, we were going to the same concert, correct? I know. Elton and John, yeah. That was done. Yeah. It's done. Well, I'm I'm happy that I've seen him perform live before. So, and I did I see the Rolling Stones at their last concert when they had it in Jersey, you know. So I I did uh, do some bucket list concerts. So I'm happy that about that. For me too, and and I was so disappointed. But hopefully, well, like everything else, hopefully we'll get back there. Yeah, we'll get back there. This is just a temporary situation, right? Now, if if something could change within the industry, what is it that you would like to change? Uh, free music. Free music. Free music. Uh, yeah. So we're almost out of time. Would you like to throw out your website and where we can find out more about you, Camille? I would love for people to come to our website and say hello and find out more about me. It's www.camillesaturday.com. Fabulous. On and, and, slow. and check out all the stuff I have on there. And, and yeah, we want to remind everybody that uh, you've got this uh, brand new tiara. Yes. 
Camille yes, Saturday. Or digital download everywhere. And eventually, uh, eventually that will also be available. Yeah, I love the, uh, and this is the back of the jacket. Yeah. Cool, cool. And uh, here's your tiara. Yes. <laughs> yes. And your songs. <laughs> there so you cool. Do you feel excited about this, Camille? Yes. I do because I've been working at these things all my life. And, you know, sometimes you get things done uh, when you want. And sometimes uh, not till years later or... I'm just grateful I got it done and I'm excited about it and I'm enjoying every every minute of being in the studio and, and working on it. And uh, I'll probably have, I'd like another one, another one uh, coming out hopefully within the next 18 months, maybe. maybe. The culmination of, of life experiences, right? It, it took a lifetime for you to get to this point, kind of, I'm, right? Sometimes. Yeah, there's just so much you could do. You know, it's so funny. We, we need to live longer, you know? <laughs> we need to live longer. I mean, it's not till you're maybe 40 or 50 that you, you say, I think I know what I want to do in my life. <laughs> just, I, I think I know what I want to be when I grow up. When right? I grow up, you know? I'm, yeah. yeah. I think that would be uh, nice if they can uh, get on those meds, you know? They're miracle pill. You know, you take that pill, you're 10 years younger overnight. Like, where is that pill? <laughs> That would be nice. Well, well Camille, it's been, it's been great having you on, and I wish you every success. Thank you. And uh, I hope to thank see you. you on stage again soon. I hope so. I hope so soon. Yeah, thank you for having me, Helen. I really enjoyed it. Great having you. See you soon. Kisses. For TV broadcast info, like Stage, Screen, and In Between with Helen on Facebook. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.